Welcome to the continued podcast adventures of Superhero Speak. But I think many of the people that love this character and that love superheroes in general have used these stories as inspiration to say, you know what, I'm going to do something good in the world. I'm going to make a difference like my hero when I was a kid. That is my fondest memory of it because when, you, when you're doing comic books, you want them to affect people. Right. You want people to care. You want you want to strike emotions. And I knew that that clone saga was striking a lot of emotions. Can you yeah. imagine uh, Pulp Fiction starring Goofy and uh, Mickey Mouse? I can totally <laughs> imagine that. You I'm sure somebody's written that one. Pounder with cheese and France. <laughs> what? <laughs> Boy, ale with cheese. Yeah. <laughs> I can totally see. I, I would I would watch the hell out of that movie. Yes, I gladly saw sacrifice at my my progeny to view of a mighty marvel beast <laughs> but neil adams is somewhere going hmm, it's, um, it's my time uh, how do you measure success hey everyone you're listening to superhero speak and i'm your host dave and J- no jd <laughs> yes boys and girls john is a little under the weather this week don't worry he doesn't have coronavirus i know we joke about it every week um, but he is, uh, he was tested. He doesn't have it. He just has a, a stomach bug, but filling in for him, we have the one and only D square. How you doing, sir? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm doing great in my nerdy life. I am heavily anticipating the final fantasy seven remake three days away. So I'm just trying to keep it together as with everyone right now. That's three days away. I thought that was coming out later. Mm-mm. No. Did- it's April, isn't it? <laughs> it is. What is time? I, I don't right. know anymore. Right now, it means nothing. Like, we are in such an uh, infinite loop of... Mm. Oh. Yeah, pretty much. How about you, How about you, JD? Do anything exciting this week? I built a... my. Okay, so the four-year-old has lost his mind. Um, <laughs> he went from being oh. the, the most, like, organized, and, like, we were trying to, like, really organize and discipline, not, like, discipline doesn't beat him, but, like, give him lots of stuff to do, so he has, so he's very regimented. Well, this situation has taken everything from him, and Daddy's trying to paint the house and get ready to sell it when we come out of this, mm-hmm. so he's been a little, not, like, not neglected, but, I mean, a little less, um, a little more bored than usual, so we'll say. So mom and I went today, I braved, I went to Target, did the Target delivery thing with actually walk stuff to your car. I got him a mini trampoline, one of those like mesh caged in ones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I spent the day building it for him. Nice. I got a big one uh, out in my backyard for my kids, but no, kids are going ape shit right now. Yeah. My son is 11 and there was a confirmed case in my town. So at this point we're like, okay, no more kids. No more outside with all the other kids. And yeah, I mean, I'm like, listen, here's Game Pass. Do whatever, the, you know, please just don't go insane. But it's still, it's no good. It's not working. So, so my daughter has twin two year olds. So mm. who, the, who she normally takes for a walk every day to somewhere yeah. to keep them busy. And, you know, she's not doing that. She's also pregnant. So she's being even more careful mm. about going out. And, um, like that's funny. My my one granddaughter said her first sentence the other day. Oh, that's cool. Nice. She went nice. she went to the door, put her hand on the door handle, looked at my daughter and said, "We go out now." Oh. <laughs> so yeah, it was it was uh, bittersweet because you know she understood enough to put a sentence together, but the answer was mm-hmm. no. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. Mm. It was also uh, like really cold that day so um so yeah it's it's tough i can't you know luckily my son is 17 and sits and plays video games all day so <laughs> yeah that's that's what i'm like with my 11 year old like no be that it's okay um but he, <laughs> he as much as he likes video games he still likes going outside i mean i'm blessed with that to be honest with you so it doesn't uh turn out <clears throat> more like me uh, but <laughs> <sighs> yes it's tough, man. There's a lot of like kids. It's it's real rough on them. Oh yeah. Though um, I'm going out more than my son. I'm still going on my walks. I'm down another two pounds. So good for you. Absolutely. Yeah. Right you know, um, I saw an, a meme. It was of course you know Chris Hemsworth 
normal without his shirt on and <laughs> and then uh uh fat thor next to each other and it's like everyone's coming out of this uh quarantine one of two ways just <laughs> take your pick <laughs> <sighs> i got my eating habits in check like i'm not snacking um as much and if i do i usually have a piece of fruit you know i'm spending it's really crazy that i can't leave them like we can't leave the house but i'm not really leaving the house too often so i'm spending significantly less money than i had before which is good yeah oh yeah uh, gas money everything yeah i haven't filled up my gas tank in like three weeks yeah it's crazy that's one of the things too though it it it, it gets me is i mean of course um <clears throat> we're all are all inundated with the ads now on tv where they're all all these companies are saying how they're here for us uh it makes me sick but the worst is <laughs> one of the worst ones i saw uh and i just noticed it like today or yesterday was the home depot and talking about well if everyone home your appliances are going to take more of a beating and and washers are on sale and i'm sitting there going yeah you're all at home you're probably, you know, let's be let's be honest. You're probably not changing your clothes as much as you did. Um, yeah. In fact, there's probably days where you go just wear your pajamas all day. At this point, you're probably actually not doing as much laundry. <laughs> so I'm yeah, a work from sure. home vet. I'm a work from home veteran. I make it a uh, an effort to put pants on every day and shower and, and do things. Or else I feel like I'm not contributing to society. You're not. So, but that's fine. Uh, but I know I'm not, but I at least want to trick myself, you know? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Oh, all right. Wear pants, everyone. That's my advice. <laughs> Wait. I mean, I'll put sweats now. on. <laughs> I'll sweats give are, you that. Sweats are one step away from just surrender. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's talk a little bit about our ongoing contest of nerd madness. Um, we've had our third and fourth matchups for movies this week and uh of course we had uh i'm gonna say it wrong again midsomar midsomar against uh spider-man homecoming or i'm sorry spider-man far from home um uh, you guys have a guess on on who took that one (laughs) (laughs) i'll just say that i the guy who did the brackets did them correctly yes so of course well and this is this was closer than i thought it would be uh deeper in the tournament man the matchups get closer uh, Spider-Man Far From Home at 61.5%. And of course, that leaves, uh, Midsommar at 38.5. And, uh, we had a couple of comments on it. Uh, Ghosts in the Stratosphere said Midsommar was the worst major motion picture of the 2010s. Wow. That is so not true. <laughs> I can think of at least like 15 worse films than that off the top of my head. Um, the Gorilla Brain podcast said, uh, I'll always vote against Tom. He- he- hashtag headbutt Tom Holland. Can we banish this man? Now, okay, now hold on. Come what on, is we all beef know- with? Well, if you guys listened to our um our, our crossover podcast with the the I did not Geek World All Stars. Um, yeah, Eight Bit Ray does not oh, like Tom Holland's okay. Spider Man at all. So yes, there are I people do remember well- that. I guess there are people in this world who don't like joy. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, uh, and unfortunately he's sick this week, so we have Don Finning it. Um, and then. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and then Pina Comics said, uh, Midsommar all day. So, so yeah, I mean, there are definitely people who liked it and some people who just don't like Tom Holland. Um, <laughs> I gave it a sympathy vote. I knew Homecoming was gonna, so I, I, I gotta say I gave it a sympathy vote. All right. And then, of course, our our uh, other matchup was It Chapter Two versus John Wick Chapter Three, hmm. and um, um, not even close. John Wick takes it at seventy six point five percent. Again, a well a well seated tournament. Yes, um, we're just I, the top seeds so, are performing so, just as they should, and there's correct. no you know princess stories here. No, there should never be a princess or a Cinderella story, if you will. Uh, the, the Gorilla Brain podcast said John Wick beating it is like Tyson fighting an infant. And then some crazy guy <laughs> named D Square uh, replied with a gif of Baby Yoda getting beat up by the Biker Scout. Lillian <laughs> uh, Sue said that she would always side with John. 
And uh, Tyler Bickle said John Wick 3. Of course. So there you go. Um, don't go. Don't ever go against a man who's taking revenge for his dog. Or, yeah, or, or Keanu Reeves in general. I feel like just anything he's going to be involved with is it's just really going to be dog great. anymore. Yeah. No, I know. I know. It's about him getting out. I, I get it. But um, OK, our third matchup in TV. Oh, wait, wait. I'm sorry. That leaves for round two for movies. Mandalorian versus Umbrella Academy. That's not a movie. Uh, that's <clears throat> not a movie. I'm sorry. That leaves Joker versus Endgame, which should be an interesting matchup, and John Wick versus Spider-Man Far From Home. We definitely have Ooh. some interesting matchups in the semifinal Here we go. round. Here we go. Now we've got TV. And, of course, we've give you uh, the first matchup was The Witcher versus Titans. And The Witcher takes it. At 65.2% to the Titans 34.8. And I do wonder something about this. Do more people have Netflix and have seen The Witcher than have the DC Universe Online and oh, have seen Titans? I guarantee that. I don't yeah. even think that's up for debate. Absolutely. Uh, so some of the comments on this matchup, we have Random Randy Savage from Colt45 saying, uh, a gif with toss a coin to your Witcher, Valley of Plenty, O oh, Valley of Plenty. Yeah, so that song That's, in general, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's been over memed, all, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, Pop Prism Power Podcast, I guess that is also from The Witcher. Is it? That GIF? I don't know. I don't recognize that GIF. And I did not see Titans. Nor did I. <laughs> so it might be a Titans GIF. Um, Nerd, Nerdy Coins said Titans is unwatchable. I believe that's Nerdicons. Nerdicons? Okay. Yeah, there is no second. <laughs> I like the Transformers. <laughs> Shane Beauregard said, got to go Cavill here. And Lillian Sue said, Draught supersedes everybody. <sighs> Those Witcher fans, man, they are hardcore. My brother's one. So, I mean, they're just, yeah, yeah they're locked in. I mean, I get it. <laughs> and uh, still going on as we record this, but... Uh, it is pro we can probably call it because um, I don't think we're going to get any more votes with 28 minutes left in the matchup. Who knows? Could happen. We had uh, Watchmen versus the boys and the boys are ahead at 52.3%. That's worse. I have to vote for Watchmen right now. 47.7%. Uh, mm. Weak. Shake and Not Nerd said the only acceptable answer, and of course it's a gif of, um, oh, I can't think of the actor's name. Carl um, Urban. Carl Urban from The Boys. Uh, Lily and Sue. The Boys is brutal yet funny, uh, at which, which Ziggy replied, The Boys was my fave of the year besides The Mandalorian, of course. Watchmen was epic as well, but was a slow build early on. That's true. And then Lily and Sue, yeah, The Boys ended dark for season one, which, yes. That was very dark. Um, so yeah, did you did you vote? I didn't see the numbers change at all. I just voted. <laughs> huh. Let me refresh. My vote should my vote should have more stake because I'm on the show. At least two percent. No, no, sorry, it doesn't work that way. So, Bullsh no, Bullsh no weighted votes. Uh, all right, now anime. Our third matchup for anime. We didn't get to the fourth one yet. Who knows what the hell's going on here? Yeah, I know. Uh, we get Castlevania versus the Dragon Prince. Um, I don't know the Dragon Prince, but I will definitely say Castlevania took this probably for name recognition alone at 71.9% to 28%. Um, it is also darn good. Yeah. Have you seen the Dragon Prince? No. I'll see. So... <laughs> Literally yesterday on Twitter, Tom Taylor, the the comics writer, recommended Dragon Prince very highly. So oh, well there you go. I'm thinking go. about I'm thinking about giving it a shot based on that. Uh, the Gorilla Brain podcast said, unless you're fans on Patrol and you dump on it, which they did, but in fans on Patrol's defense, they uh, were talking about season three, um, which where the story changes and apparently, and they were only the first episode is very boring, so. Uh, they also said Castlevania all day, baby. Uh, Lily and Sue always Castlevania. And the House of D podcast said, <laughs> "Thou dare dare challenge me." 
There you go. Is that, uh, that's not Ducard, is it? Alucard. Alucard, yeah. Which is just Dracula backwards, we know, okay? <laughs> Did you ever see that TV, that syndicated TV show in the 1980s where they, re- where they, uh, it was Dracula, but he was like a, a real estate developer in modern day, I believe it was California, and his name was Alexander Lucard. Anybody remember that? No. I do not. It was like a, it was like on op like with uh, Friday the Thirteenth the series uh-huh. and like Tales from the Dark Side. I remember both of those. I do not remember this one. Wow. I think it lasts like maybe a season. Oh okay. But I was like nine, so I thought it was awesome at the time. Uh, which then That's how it is will give us, of course, um, we still have uh, where is it? Darwin's Game versus Bookworm coming up, and that leaves that the winner of that will take on Castlevania. And of course, we will have Demon Slayer versus Inspector uh, for round two, and then comics. Oh, you want to take this, uh, Don? I, I'm sorry, I don't have it exactly in front of me. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll, then I'll keep going. Um, uh, so for our third matchup for comic books, we of course gave you Batman Damned versus Absolute Carnage. Um, I'm not surprised by this, uh, Don, but you can uh, tell me what you think. Uh, Batman Damned takes it at 59.4% to Absolute Carnage's 40.8 or 40.6. Um, yeah. Does, does that shock you at all or? No, it, it doesn't shock me because Absolute Carnage was, um, certainly a cool storyline and we learned a lot, but it didn't, the, I didn't like the ending because there really wasn't an ending. It was a continuation. Mm-hmm. So it, 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 it had a peak in the middle and then kind of dropped. Whereas, Batman, he's the top DC property, um, having a really great run. So I, I knew this would be close, but I know that just Batman alone just it commands a little bit more, uh, you know, as far as fan power and fandom over Absolute Carnage, which was good, which was really good. But the ending, eh, they didn't stick it. So yeah. I, I understand this completely. Um, Ghost of the Stratosphere seemed to echo that with by saying, I haven't read Damned, but AC was so middling. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then uh, Ziggy said Carnage was solid. So um, I don't know. I, 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 I say you put Batman's penis up against anything. Batman's penis <laughs> wins every time. It is Batman's penis. Let's be real. <laughs> uh, so Batman Dam will take on the winner of uh, Conan versus Power of X. And of course, the other matchup for that round will be House of X versus Blade Runner 2019. That's why they named it Batman Dam. You know, it's like Batman Dam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so I know we haven't done any other ner- uh, social media madness lately. Um, and and JD and John have been grateful for that, but we got a lot of feedback on uh, just Bloodshot in general from Surprising. our interview last week. Um, so we actually even got a lot on Facebook, which we don't normally. So, uh, so I'm going to read some of that. Uh, Ru Mag, uh, uh, you know how I am with names. Uh, Rui Maga, whatever his name is, Rui. Oh, just yeah, only on. one scene to rem- remember forever. The dance of the bad guy at the beginning, Psycho Killer. The rest I forgot. Yeah, uh, I, I, I can see that. Um, then, uh, Keon, Keon Frank Sr. said, did you see this on the flash drive? Oh, okay, so he's talking to someone specific. Never mind. Um, it sounds like they stole some movies to be yes, quite honest. Yes, right, yes. yes, yes. Um, I've seen worse. Looks a bit like a plot of, a pilot for a series. That was Jason Hanslip. Um, yeah, there, it, there's definitely a lot of, it's definitely a setup. Um, it's, not a, it's not a glowing review. I've right. seen worse. Yeah. Uh, Paul Turner, worth a watch, but not best film in the world. Seven out of ten, but a repeat watch. Uh, so, so he kind of is agreeing with what we said. Um, you can't, you can watch it now on Cartoon HD. Interesting. I don't know what that is. Uh, and then probably some Amazon Fire Stick. Yeah. Uh, jailbroke, you know, something. And then uh, Daniel Bardanina says it was a bit meh. That's the consensus, it seems. Uh, yeah. Have you seen it, uh, Don? I, I haven't, but I'm 
I'm familiar with the character in the comics. Obviously, you've reviewed the the comic for the website. And he is a meh character. (laughs) We talked about that last week. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's action packed. It's thrilling. And, you know, if you want to see some guy get blown to bits, come back and kill the bad guys for justified reason. Boom. There you go. So, yeah. I mean, that was real impressive, you know, back in the day. But now it's you got Deadpool and all, you know. So characters with personality. Right. Yeah. Um, on Twitter, random Randy Savage said, I was debating on paying to the fee to watch it at home. I can recreate the theater experience to which Joey DiCarlo of the, uh, so wizard podcast responded. A cheaper way is to take a dump and look at it in the toilet cool. afterwards. Uh, to which random Randy Savage <laughs> replied, I always do that and see Guy Pierce. The problem with Joey DiCarlo is he never really expresses what's on his mind. No, it's always very, it's always very colloquial and mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love Joey. He's a straight shooter. Um, Gigi Ruiz said, "I expected so little, but was pleasantly surprised by how good it was. It has a couple of good twists that keep you guessing. Also, like that they kept Vin Diesel's character from being either only a victim or a hero. And Isa Gonzalez is a star in the making." I mean, I guess. It's the most positive thing I've heard about this film yes. from anyone. I guess uh, if you go in expecting crap and it's not total crap, you come out okay. And then Rocket Comics said, I thought it delivered. Definitely worth seeing in the theater. Vin is never amazing, but everyone else in the film bolsters his stoic performance. It's a solid film. Great adaption of the comic. See, and that was the main reason that So Wizard didn't like it was Vin Diesel's acting. And saying he wasn't strong enough to carry a movie. So no, I dis I still disagree that Vin yeah. Diesel isn't strong enough as a character. I think he just plays the the Dom Toretta stereotype too much and doesn't very much. Because I heard, like again, I fell asleep in the movie and I'm not going to watch it again. <laughs> there's more there's more subtlety and variance in his I am Groot yes. than I saw. Yes. So I just think it's it's his performance. It's not that he's incapable of the performance. And then, uh, and then again, this this crazy guy uh, Timothy Jones uh, came in and said, "I really have no interest in seeing this. He should really do something about that glowing heartburn." So, so, so thanks, Tim. Yes. We, Insert sour grapes joke. Yes, here. exactly. Ah, <laughs> uh, but that is enough social media madness for the week. Thank God. And here is D Square to tell you how you can find yeah. more social media madness. Enjoying the show. Want to be part of Social Media Madness? Make sure you are following SuperheroSpeak.com where you can find all of the show's social media links at the top of the page. While you're there, you can check out old episodes of the podcast as well as some other great content. Check the site often because we are posting some great comic reviews as well as comic book and movie news content every day. Make sure and follow us on Twitter at SuperheroSpeak. And while you're there, check out the rest of the Geek World All-Stars Podcast Network. You can follow them at stars underscore geek. The Geek World All-Star Podcast Network include great programs such as the Pop Prison Power Podcast, Cult 45, So Wizard, Fans on Patrol, the Gorilla Brain Podcast, and of course, Superhero Speak. Search for hashtag GWAllStars. You will not be disappointed. Now, it's back to Dave and the boys on Superhero Speak. You don't have to say anything. It's pre-recorded. We're, we're good. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. I was confused. Uh, Don, that was perfect. That was beautiful. I love the way you deliver that every week. So on that note, boys and girls, we are going to take a quick break, and we will be right back. After these messages... Right back. And we're back. We have some news to talk about, I think. Um, this was a big one that came out this week that I kind of wanted to talk about a little bit. Of course, Marvel Comics is putting a third of their issues on pause until July. Um, I kind of I get the idea that if there's no direct market to distribute them, why make the books? Yeah. You know, if they're not selling books, they can't afford to pay people. So, 
Yeah, I mean, it, it, particularly with all these stay-at-home orders and stuff, like, and I feel bad because I, I know I have to clear a file out, but even from that respect, like, once we can actually go in and regularly buy the comics and, you know, start back up again, it's it's a shame, but I, I do understand why they're doing this. Um, you know, digital's great, but, yeah, like you said, a direct market is everything. I keep seeing a lot of people posting on social media, especially independent creators, uh, wondering if this is going to do in the comic book industry. I don't think it's going to do in the comic book industry. I do think it might do in the direct market industry, which has been on shaky ground for, God, more than a generation. Like, I think when they, when they, when comics left the newsstands and Diamond became the only distributor, it made it, there's just, it's too many, it's too many plates spinning on the little, on the little ball. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it just, it just doesn't, it's not a sustainable business mode. Like, it, I just don't see it working past this. I really don't. The Comic Cons are really, don't gonna kill uh that that's where a lot of the local comic book shops make money mm-hmm. with their collector inventory um or their pop inventory and so i know my local comic book shop you know every weekend basically packs up half their shop and goes on the road and so they don't have that the retail side's not running you know like it should um so yeah, I mean that that that's killing them too, alongside of this distribution problem and now creation problem, since the creators themselves are gonna throttle it down. Um, we're just obligated. We're gonna have to help it come back. I mean that's really what we're gonna have to do is hopefully more of them survive than not, and those that do survive, we're just I don't know. We're gonna have to drop some money and get them back. Uh, to a place where they can be sustainable because it is it, it's a it's a declining industry and it's already having a tough time right yeah and that's the whole thing of any kind of declining industry when something like this comes along it, it's not a it's not a good thing it's not a uh it's not a shot of adrenaline in the system as it were um mm-hmm. yeah so i agree like if you guys are fans of the books and physical books versus digital when you're allowed to go out again make sure you run to your local store and pick some books up and get them going again. Um, so here's a little bit of a follow-up, something that we talked about before. Of course, Black Widow uh, did not have a release date. They have now announced that uh, Black Widow's release date will be November 6th of this year. Um, they've also pushed their Mulan to July 24th, which originally belonged to Jungle Cruise. So that got pushed back an entire year to uh, July 30th of next year. And they also pushed back, um, what you call it? Dr. Strange to, uh, to later next year. So, man, I'm, you know, I, I've been thinking about it, about how, you know, we just had end game, which I just rewatched by the way. Mm-hmm. And dear Lord, is that a great movie? Um, <laughs> I still, get chills at Avengers Assemble. Even it's one o'clock in the morning and I'm just trying to finish the movie. That stuff happens and I'm just anyway. Um but the fact that this all happened kind of in the middle of a lull and when they're really with Black Widow trying to restart back everything so we can build back to that point again. Um it's just when we're finally allowed to go back though, I think it's only going to help these movies. I think they were otherwise going to have mediocre performance in comparison to Endgame and Infinity War and Homecoming, but I don't know if, since it's all being pushed back and when we're finally able to go see this stuff and it's releasing, I, you know, I think that it's going to come roaring back. It's like, I, I agree. It's almost like they planned it. I don't know. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I fully agree. Like, especially if this lasts throughout even midsummer or or beginning, you know, end of summer, let's say August. Um, hopefully it's not that long, but we'll see. Um, yeah, like come November, the Black Widow, if, if it was only going to make 500 million, I think we'll make a billion dollars now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think people are going to be real excited to go to the theater again when we have the option. It might be like, I do think theaters come out of this in a better place than comic book stores because the theaters can offer a unique experience. Right. Yeah. You know, like a communal experience that I think people are missing right now. So I do. I get it. You got to push these movies back, or else you're going to get killed on what you spent on it. So this is the right. This is the right call. 
And plus, I think I think most movies are still under freeze. Like I think everything's like stopped working. Yeah. So you got to push stuff like Doctor Strange is probably they can't do anything with it, with it right now. So that makes sense to push that back a little bit. And again, I think it's I think it's the right time for this. Like as far as like Marvel goes, because like I don't know, it doesn't seem like people are super fired up for the Black Widow movie. So if you are going to take a pause, maybe this is the time to do it. Yep, this is true. Side yeah. note: is, is Jungle Cruise a remake of the African Queen? The old Humphrey Bogart movie. I know nothing of this, and I'm looking at the article you sent. Uh, as far as I know, it's based on the ride from. Oh God, another one of those movies. Okay. Yes, you know, like <laughs> the Haunted Mansion, or I can't think of any of the other ones. Pirates of the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean, which, which surprisingly worked. Yes, that was the only one. Uh, yeah, because people are just infatuated with pirates. At least they were like True. ten years ago. Two thousand three. Seems to have cooled off. Yeah, there you go. That movie's old. That people don't realize. God, I'm old. Movies. <laughs> yeah okay uh the uh you guys are still both younger than me so yeah always will be oh, 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 oh. oh. Moving, on, <laughs> moving on um <laughs> one thing that movies can still do is work in pre-production um like getting writers and whatnot and of course they are going to be making an ant-man 3 and um sorry john caston who is one of the right i'm sorry I'm sorry, I'm, sorry. I'm reading the wrong line. Uh, Jeff Loveness, who is one of the writers of Rick and Morty, uh, will be writing Ant-Man 3. Uh, so definitely it's going to be a comedy. Hey, he's done some comics, too. Like, he's uh, not a ton, but he's done a bunch of work for Marvel. So this it's, is going, it's going to be glorious. <laughs> yes. I mean, just with all the weird stuff they do with Ant-Man, I can't wait. And, I mean, I can't believe... If you would have told me 20, 25 years ago, hey, little, hey there, little D, you're going to like Ant, you're going to be excited about an Ant-Man movie someday. I would have never believed you, but <laughs> I'm all about it. A Scott Lang Ant-Man movie on top of that. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Not Hank Pym, but, Scott Lang. Yeah, right. Uh, no. And it's going to be played for the, for the boy, by the boyfriend in Clueless. I'd call you a liar on all of this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'd be like, great, at least the guy that hit his wife's not going to be the star, but still. Oh, think of Ant Man, it's Hank Pym. Right. Yeah, and uh, that's how they brushed over all of it by starting with Scott Lang. Um, yeah. It's not a bad move. No. no the whole thing works. And, and then Paul Rudd, right. Well, that's the thing. Paul Rudd makes it work. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. You get the right actor, the right character. I don't care if we start with Guy Gardner, Green Lantern. It'll work. I, I maintain that the whole reason the MCU works is because Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man was a revelation. Like if it's the wrong if the wrong guy gets cast in that role, we're not we might not be having this conversation right now. Yeah, I agree. This is true. The, the whole MCU is built on his back. Um, oh, and of course, I don't. I think we announced this on the show before. I think this is old news, but of course, Peyton Reed is also back as director uh, for Ant Man. So, uh, you know, I was very against Peyton Reed making this in the first place because I really wanted to see what Edgar Wright could do because Edgar Wright's such a visionary. Right. But Peyton Reed just clicks with this, man. Like, Ant-Man 2 is a perfectly fine movie. And Ant-Man 1 is freaking awesome. So I'm good with all this. He fits. Cool. All right. So I had accidentally mentioned John Kasten. Um, Kasten. Kasten, yes. No, he is. Uh, he has confirmed that. I mean, this. he confirmed something that everybody already knew. Nobody is working on a sequel for Solo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no one is wanting to waste money on. <laughs> it for you. Um, I know there's lots of people who argue uh, release at the wrong time, off of the coattails of a Star Wars movie that made people unhappy. Um, no, they just didn't do it right. Yeah, yeah I'm with yeah, 100%. Yeah, we didn't need we didn't need to know the origin of his last name. We didn't, you know, like. No, not at all. Yeah. Show um, me, show me how how you got your your life debt, you know, from Chewbacca and right. You know, have those dice matter yes that was the worst part i always thought the dice were what he used to win the falcon right exactly it wrote itself but yeah they 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 just didn't use that it's oh he just had him in his his car like that doesn't even make sense they're aliens they're not humans like yeah they don't hang fuzzy dice anyway they're just an obscure thing that i remember noticing as a kid and it's like oh now it makes sense he won the falcon with that nope my biggest issue with that movie was that Alden Alden Emmerich had no had no presence or bravado like like Harrison Ford. Like if that wasn't a solo movie, maybe I'd feel better about it. Maybe, 
But there's nothing about that guy made me think of Harrison Ford. And you can say, well, he's trying to bring yeah. his own spin to it. But it's like, well, I don't want that. Like, right. that's not what Han Solo is. Yeah, that is that is very true. And more. So, moving on to so another piece of Star Wars news. This has me concerned. Uh, Joby Harold, who is one of the uh, producers, was it? Yeah, of uh, uh, Edge of Tomorrow, is going to write the obi One series. I keep hearing so many different stories about this series. Um, I keep wondering if it's actually going to happen or if it's all just conjecture. It really, it really does seem up in the air. Um, we keep getting reassurances, but then we're, we keep getting these changes. I don't know. I'm with you and your anxiety about it. And I really want it to happen. I love Obi-Wan. Right. Yeah. Particularly with the actor. That's another character actor combination that just I think it works. I think back to um I believe it was the early two thousands and you would hear every other month a different actress being cast as Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. And you found out the reason um that was happening was because Warner Brothers wanted the actress to be in movie X so said, oh, well, we'll cast you as Wonder Woman if you do this movie. Mm. So it was like a carrot they would dangle, and they kept doing it, even though they had no intention of making a Wonder Woman movie at that time. But everyone thought yeah. they were going to because everyone and their mother at some point was cast to play her. Um, <laughs> they are so shitty. <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny you talk about that. We just mentioned how Alden Eimerick didn't quite work as Han Solo, whereas Ewan McGregor – acts a lot like, and he said that when he was doing his performance, he was taking a lot from Alec Guinness. Right. Mm -hmm. Because Alec Guinness created a character. When you're creating a character, when you've created a character, you want to step into that a little bit more so than making it your own. I do think Ewan McGregor does make him his own a little bit, but you feel like this is the same guy. Right. Yes. Like the entire time. Whereas with Solo, they never felt like the same person at all. No, no. And there's actually, I do think... You see a journey with Obi Wan in the first in the prequel. Like you do. Take love him or hate them, there is definitely a journey for that character and you see how he went from a Padawan to the guy who was like, Okay, Luke, you've got to learn the ways of the force and come to me with Alderaan. Like you can see that journey. Mm -hmm. You know? Um and and yeah, I I wanna see this. I wanna fill in those blanks, like what was going on on Tatooine for all those years? Um was he hiding yeah. in a cave to protect Luke, all those times? With the Was other... he sheltering in place? <laughs> uh, he was actually from COVID-19. Ooh. He knew. He knew. Um, of course, the random person would come by and try and fight him. But, um, yeah. El Sherrod Het, the uh, sand uh, sand person Jedi. Interesting character. Later became Darth Krayt. Him and Obi-Wan kind of tangled a little bit, but... But yeah, that's the sort of stuff I want to hear about. Because that's no longer canon, but could be. That sounds awesome. Yeah, it, 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 well, he's in the uh, Star Wars Legacy uh, series with like Luke Skywalker's great grandson, Cade Skywalker. I read one so, issue of that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, and it's cool. He's got that, you know, uh, Yuuzhan Vong armor because the Yuuzhan Vong had him for a while, but they ended up like respecting because he could take all their stuff, and so he like had their armor. Anyway, good stuff. Huh. But you could have all sorts of great Obi-Wan stories. Star Wars stories in general, but I, Obi-Wan is awesome. Yeah. No. Oh, all right. So we're all for it. We're hoping that, that they get their act together. I mean, of course, they can't start filming anything anyway, even if they get the script written tomorrow. But hopefully... But once all this clears, yes. hit, that print, hit that print money button. Go ahead. <laughs> press it. Um, speaking of things clearing, so this... I brought this... Uh, uh, article in because I believe this is an interesting topic of discussion. Um, San Diego Comic Con, of course, the biggest uh, nerd event of the year, uh, it is Nerd Mecca, uh, has made an announcement on their Twitter that they are, as of right now, they are still planning to go ahead uh, with their July 1st and 2nd, uh, their, their July dates for San Diego Comic Con this year. Um, There's no freaking way. Yeah, I think that's very positive uh, thinking on their end. I think it's going to be highly controversial so, if they do it, which may be why they do it. So, so, so exactly. It brings up two points. Um, one, let's even say 
by the end of by by the end of May or yeah we'll, we'll get we'll we'll say the, at the earliest at the end of May you know it looks like we're in the we're completely in the clear I'm not saying that's going to happen I'm saying let's just say it does how long before people actually will want to gather in big groups like that I don't know I don't think I want to until there's a vaccine quite honestly or at least some type of a that's, treatment that's the going to be the linchpin is do is there a vaccine and you're not going to have one for a year like I talked to, it's funny. I've got a, my friend Russell Nolte who who makes his living um, doing these shows. Mm-hmm. Has pretty much said he's not doing, he can't do a show for at least a year. Like he's he's of the belief that this isn't going to mm. happen, and I kind of agree. But a lot of the people who work these things are like, there's no way, there's no way I'm doing this. There's no way because yeah. like there's a, there's you guys know con crud. Con crud is a thing. Uh-huh. Now imagine con crud that can kill you. <laughs> Like, it just, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you 100%. Um, I think it's irresponsible. I get, I get, I get them pushing because this is a huge money maker. So, I understand. So, but, yeah. uh, Pat Shan, comic book writer for, um, uh, uh, Robin Hood, um, he's, he's, he's done a lot of different stuff, uh, in comics. He actually posted something on his social media that he thinks all cons <laughs> should cancel for the rest of the year. I would not be surprised if that doesn't happen. So, that, I mean, that got me thinking because I, I agree. But, like, again, my point was New York Comic Con's in October. We have no idea where things are going to be in October. And there's a lot of money in coordinating that goes into these things. Mm-hmm. So to cancel now and, again, if it clears up by May and everyone's happy I'm, or if the, and there's a vaccine by by October, I'm not saying there will be. Um, then, and they canceled already, then they kind of just threw all that money away, you know? And, and like you said, there are people who are dependent on these cons to make money. So I don't know. It's, it's, it's tough. I like, like, that's the whole thing is to be completely honest with you. Of course, our big show every year is New York Comic Con. And even if it's cleared up by then, I'd be hesitant to go into the, um, the, the Javits Hospital, the Javits, the currently Javits Hospital. It's like, wait, not only, not only was New York hit the worst with this virus, they turned the Javits Center into a hospital, so it was filled with people with this uh, virus. Yeah. Like, yeah, and I, you're, are we going to trust the workers to clean that and sterilize it once they're done? Well, I think you, I think those are the people you can trust, to be honest with you, the people yeah. like who are working for the city, but like. I don't want to do it for the optics of it. Like we have that going on in the McCormick place in Chicago right now. It hasn't officially been opened yet, but McCormick, which is our equivalent to the Javits Center, it is lined up ready to go. Yeah. And I don't I've done a ton of work there for my for my regular job. I've been there for C two E two a bunch. I was gonna go there for the AEW pay per view, which I didn't get to go to, but I mean like I don't I don't wanna go. Like and I you know me, I like going to wrestling shows, I love going out, like I love going to the Comic Cons and I just Man, that's gonna take a while for me to get myself like I don't want to use a stupid term. I don't want to use a term like PTSD because I think I downplays PTSD, but there is like a little bit of like fear. Yeah, and there's going to be for a while, definitely. Yeah, I don't feel I don't feel comfortable. Like I went to Target. I told you I went to Target today. And I didn't leave my car, and I'm staring at two girls trying to load this like trampoline in my trunk. It's just it's bad right now, man. I get what they're trying, but I just I think that's super optimistic. And maybe not real. Real. Yeah. No, and I honestly think even if even if best case scenario everything clears up and and nothing happens, um, and these cons go on, you're gonna get you know a quarter of the attendance that you've gotten at these shows in the past. Which just blows the question: Is it worth it then financially? Yeah, no, that's a good question. I don't know. I mean, if you've already sold the tickets, I guess it doesn't matter. But the the tickets haven't gone on sale for for it yet. I don't think. I know New York, it hasn't. So, yeah. Especially this week, too, because this is supposed to be the week where things really. I don't want to use. How do I say this? This is the week a lot of people are supposed to die. So I think that, like, putting yes, like, they, these they, overly they, optimistic things out this week is like, mm, now, is, this, is this the time? Now, now, hold on. The reason they're saying that. How do you put it? You can't put a good spin on this. But <laughs> the reason they're no. saying that is that they think we're, we're at the, the peak of the curve and it'll be flattening out. At this Correct. 
Correct. But, but that well, means my, but, that's where you get the most deaths is when you're at correct. the peak of that's, the curve. Correct, correct. <laughs> this, is this the week to tell everyone, by the way, we're still going to have Comic-Con? No, no, it's not. No, that's you're right. right. Like, maybe in a Mass month. Graves, Comic-Con. <laughs> Mass Graves, Comic-Con. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's just like, it seems like, it seems tone deaf to have that announcement, like, now. However, I've heard the lines at, for Hall H will be really short this year. Oh, oh. oh God. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. Um, breaking news: <laughs> uh, the the poll for um, the boys versus Watchmen has finalized, and the boys still took it fifty one point nine to forty eight percent. Boo! <laughs> so, Boo. so they squeaked by Watchmen. Sorry, sorry, JD. It's whatever. <laughs> I'm a surprise. Yeah, me too. I guess that's our Cinderella story: is the boys. Mm-hmm. I'll have to see how they do in the next round. Um, so the other thing that's facing what Who are they facing to you. Uh, hold on. Let me bring the email up again real quick. They will face Witcher. Yes. Ooh, that'll be an interesting oh. one. That is a good one. You get those five, these elite eight matchups, man. Things get intense. Yes. Very intense. Um, you know, when you can't afford a house, you have to live in tents. Um, so, <laughs> So to, so in our promise to bring you something new and weird and different um, this week, uh, we had said we were going to watch Onward and give you guys a review of it this week. And uh, I watched it. I know we all know JD watched it instead of <laughs> Bloodshot. Uh, I had to watch it three more times with the four-year-old. <laughs> um, <laughs> and Don, you watched it today? I, I did. I, I did. I just finished it a mirror three hours ago. Ah, so it is fresh in your mind. It is. Uh, it is. All right. So let's go around real quick as we always start off. Everyone give initial impressions of the movie without giving any spoilers away. And of course, Don will let you go first since it's most fresh in your mind. Uh, this is something that uh, the kids uh, will enjoy, but geek dads like myself uh, will enjoy even more, and if you're a bigger little brother, you might also have an extra kick for you here. So I, I thought overall it was a very enjoyable and some very spot on uh, D and D references. So I enjoyed those a lot. Cool, JD. Tears down my face at the end. I love this movie. There's one thing that prevents me from being the same way, and I'll get into if we actually talk about it. That's cool. And I'll explain why I, I get the teary stuff later. Um, but like, yeah, tears. I adore this movie. Um, as a father and grandfather, and uh, have having seen Frozen one and two. Hey, oh my God! I got two daughters. Believe me. My initial impression of this movie: it's Frozen for boys. Oh, I like that. It's instead of two sisters, it's two brothers. One has magic, one doesn't. They go on a journey together. Um. So yeah. Yep. So that is, that is, you know, so if you, if you liked Frozen, uh, or if you have boys and you didn't watch Frozen, I don't know why it doesn't matter, um, cause it's fun for the whole family, but, uh, you, you have them watch Onward then instead. Um, all right. So here is where the spoilers will begin, boys and girls. So if you haven't seen Onward and you're a fan of this podcast, you probably will never watch it. Uh, <laughs> no, I know there's some crossover. Um, but uh, if you are planning to watch it and you don't want to be spoiled, this is where you can turn the show off because you've listened long enough for this to count as a download. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so of course, the movie stars Chris Pratt and um, uh, Tom Holland. Tom Han Holland is the, the younger brother. Uh, shoot, I can't think of their names. Ian. 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 And, the, and Barley. Ian Barley. Yes, is, is the older brother. Um, and basically... Uh, their father passes away before Ian is born. And, uh, oh, wait, before we get to that, we live in a world, imagine if Dungeons and Dragons was real, but then we still developed technology, but had all the mystical creatures around still. And commercialism. Oh, of course. Yes. You always have commercialism. Uh, <laughs> commercialism has taken over Faerun. Imagine that. Uh, the, uh, so the father passes away before the younger brother is born. So, he grows up without a father, and then on his – was it his 16th or 18th birthday? 16th. 16th. Okay. On his 16th birthday, the mother gives both the boys a gift, said this was from your father, um, and he said to give it to you when he thought you were old enough. 
And of course, no one believes, most people don't believe magic exists before, except, um, uh, the older brother. God, I, Barley, uh, believes in magic because he still plays a game that's based on the old times, which is very much like Dungeons and Dragons. And, um, it's a visitation spell. It allows the father to return for one full day so he could see the, uh, men that his sons had become. And of course, Barley tries to cast the spell. He can't do it, but Ian tries it when everyone leaves the room and was only able to bring half of them back, his legs. <laughs> uh, they, yeah. and then, so of course they go into a journey to finish the spell and bring him all the way back. Um, so yeah, what was, uh, let's, let's start with, with JD since you've seen it three, four times. Something like that. Uh, what was, what's, what was one of your favorite things about this movie? Uh, my favorite, there's a lot, there's a lot I really like about this movie. The relationship between the two brothers is fantastic. Um, my brother is probably my best friend. So, I mean, we have a, a relationship that, that kind of reminded me a little bit of this. And, um, I really love the idea of, um, I just love the whole idea of, of getting the, the visitation spell, the one day back, you know, um, my, I lost my mom when I was 21 and she's been on my mind a lot lately with uh, me hitting 40 this year and, you know, having the little four year old. So it's been, these thoughts have been creeping in my head for most of the year <laughs> with the quarantine more frequently. Mm -hmm. Um, so this movie hit me right in the feels when I, when I needed it. And, um, I just, I love everything about it and the bittersweet ending, it just, it, it, everything about it just worked for me. And I, I, I cried three times. <laughs> I really did. <laughs> How about you, Don? Um, yeah, I mean, just like JD, you know, I'm an, I'm an older brother. Uh, and so I had actually fulfilled a little bit of that role as kind of, you know, uh, helping them along their paths, you know, and now I do a podcast with them. Um, but I, I really enjoyed the premise. I just, I, I guess I didn't understand. And this is just me thinking too much into it. And I know this ahead of time, guys. I'm, I'm insane. That's, okay. That's why I don't watch many movies. Cause, but how did you go from, yep, this D and D world magic exists to, I don't know, you know, this, this commercialized, uh, society. Um, but okay. Nonetheless, you know, that's easily explainable. We just don't know. Um, the character of Barley, I don't like as the older brother, like I, I get it. He's cool, but I don't under quite understand his archetype doesn't make sense to me. He's the D and D player, the magic, the gathering guy. Okay. I got that. But how is he then also, I've got the heavy, uh, the eighties the heavy metal, uh, band jean jacket with the patches on, um, the screw, you know, don't do well. I've got the, you know, old van with the painting on it. Like he's like those two archetypes and they it just didn't, it didn't make sense to me. Okay. Yes. This children's movies about trolls and, and everything. Um, but outside of that, I really thought they really mimicked like a D and D venture vi uh, very well. They had the gelatinous cube in there. Like when I saw that, I was like, Oh, <laughs> that was so the cool. best part. The gelatinous cube. <laughs> <laughs> right. Cause it's the I one like, creature when you read it in the monster manual, you know, like, like, who cares? It, it's a cube. What is it gonna, what's it gonna right. do? But yes, once you saw it pop out and chase them, it was like, oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so I, I thought that was really cool. All right. So let me, let me, let me address, address two things here, uh, Don. Um, so number one, as a person who has read, read a lot of urban fantasy and, uh, follows a lot of that kind of, stuff um and stories and whatnot there's a common trope belief that you know magic did really exist at one point on earth but because once people figure out technology and you don't need magic anymore that's what makes it go away so that was the trope in the in, in this mm -hmm. movie like it was just to me that was a shorthand i got right away uh barley that was me <laughs> okay i am awesome. i am barley through and through i'm sorry i was the metalhead who also okay. played magic the gathering and uh and D D as a kid so yeah like i i got him right away <laughs> like yeah that's me okay oh yeah uh not as much of never a screw up but yeah yeah never seen someone like that. <laughs> uh, uh, oh i had the jean jacket with all the patches on it and all that yeah nice all right um yeah, no, I think, I think like my, probably my favorite thing was the gelatinous cube. Um, you know, it's, it, it, I, I, I really enjoyed 
the bittersweet ending, though I did see it coming. Um, see, I did not enjoy. I I thought Ian got screwed. It made me mad. No, I, see, I didn't. Yeah, I, I get where Dave's coming. From. I I agree. Yeah. No, I got it. Like it made sense to me that it was it was Ian's hero's journey, and that was his lesson. Spoiler. Um, that he already had a father figure in his life, his older brother. Yes. Who didn't have a father figure in his life. Right. Who never said goodbye. Oh, my God. Tears. Um, yeah, right. He didn't get to say goodbye. And that's why Barley was somewhat of a screw up because of mm-hmm. the regret of not saying goodbye to his father and being afraid um, mm-hmm. of it. Like, like, yeah, it all fit to me. Like it was that's what I think makes it very well written is that that to me, the whole story works um, in that aspect. Um, but yeah. So. So, yeah, no, I mean, definitely very good movie. Um. So what's something you didn't like about the movie, like, that maybe got under your skin? I don't know. Um, I will start with you, Don. <laughs> well, I, you know what? That's it. That just, I, I was the, really upset that Ian didn't get to speak with his father. Although I did agree with the lesson uh, that it was, it was trying to teach us. But when I think of in the beginning of the movie, he's wearing his dad's sweatshirt. He's listening to and having a conversation with this uh, TDX cassette tape and the old boom box. So, I mean, he obviously really had, you know, some issue there. Yeah. I mean, that's the lesson is that he was chasing yeah. a father figure that he was doesn't never going to, that doesn't exist and ignoring yeah. the father figure that was in his life. Right. Because he only oh, wants the, well, the idealized yeah. version of his father, right? He'll never, the real dad could never live up to what he's envisioned himself to be. Whereas Barley had dad and never, and never said bye to him. So like, I agree. Like I was bummed that, that Ian doesn't get to see him. And that's part of the reason I had a tear, but I got what he was going for. And I love the sacrifice that Ian makes because Ian figures out that my brother needs this more than I do. Yeah, I do get that. I do get that. I I don't know. I'm always I don't know, like Tony Stark. There's always a there's always a solution. Get out of the no, rubble. Yeah, Climb out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right though. He does get screwed, and that's part of the. Uh, it's got a nice little fairy tale thing with me, because like sometimes people get fucked in fairy tales. Sorry, Dave. Sometimes people get screwed <laughs> in fairy tales, and I think Ian definitely kind of kind of gets the, the short end of it. But I think he does it. For a purpose of sacrifice, because like so much of his brother's life has been to take care of him, and this is his chance to kind of pay his brother back, and it is bittersweet. But yeah. I do think it works. I'm glad they didn't force, which I thought they were gonna do. I'm glad they didn't force the centaur to become the real father figure. Mm-hmm. They just yeah. kind of let that be more for mom than for the boys. So I'm okay with that because I felt like when I felt that coming, I thought it was gonna be they didn't do enough work to build it up, and I'm glad they didn't go where I thought they were gonna go. Did you think he was going to, like, throw his hat off and have, like, the flowing Fabio hair and start? No, I didn't until then. That made me <laughs> chuckle. I laughed. That was a nice little final laugh. Um, one thing I didn't – I don't I don't know if I didn't like or I didn't get, but one thing that I had a hard time with is how much time has passed since this Age of Magic. Because, like, when, when it really – when I noticed it the most was the Manticore. Like, how yeah. old is she? How old is she? Right. Because she's the one who actually had these grand quests that nobody remembers being real. So is she is she immortal? If they if she is and they say like yes, she's immortal, then I can accept that. And that right. she's had to change to adapt to this new world. I'm okay with it. I think I would personally I would rather have that be a Manticore descendant where they have to do something that like her great great grandmother had to do. That would make more sense for me as far as timelines go. But if you tell me she's she's immortal, I can I can accept it. But I just didn't feel like they told me one way or the other. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's nitpicky. It's it's incredibly nitpicky. So I won't, I won't take it. I won't say it. The, yeah. Oddly enough, my five year old didn't have didn't have any of these questions. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> um. Well. Okay. So so again, as somebody who who loves Dungeons and Dragons and urban fantasy and all that, there are many mis- mystical creatures that live for hundreds of years. And then the question you need to ask yourself is, um, when did uh, um, Edison? I know not Edison didn't invent it, but when did he? Commercialize the light bulb, electric light for the house. Yeah. Um, early 1900s, I couldn't tell you the year off the top of my head. Right. So 200 years ago? 100. Oh, yeah, early 1900. So 100 years ago. Look at how the world has progressed since then. For sure. Right. So, I mean, like, you could sit there and say it was 100 years. You could say it was even 200 years since the age of magic, you know? No. I just wanted a number. But I can accept it. I mean, it's just because I'm not... This is not a this is not a familiar world to me. Right. So yeah. and that's why I accepted a lot of things. But like 
Um, like the gelatinous cube, it just made me laugh because it sounded funny. I didn't know that was a real thing. <laughs> you know, so a lot of that stuff. Oh yeah, it's a real thing, me. and then you're like, I'm gonna go hit it with my metal sword, and then you do, and it, you know, you're a level three party, and now you're all dead, or your equipment at least is all gone. Gelatinous. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. See, I can appreciate it, but I just don't know it. Like, I, okay. I, I like it, but I know I, I can't. Simple. I can't like. Like I, I appreciate that. The, the manticore was also very detailed um, and incorrect. And the fact that they chose a manticore and not um, some other, you know, easier monster. And then, yeah, she actually had a scorpion tail and yeah. uh, actually used it at one point, which was funny. I mean, they could easily they could have easily used an elf for that. Yeah. You know, and, it, and Octavia Spencer is fantastic playing her. She's a damn treasure. Yes. Yeah, All absolutely. Right. Um. So so the only issue I don't have an issue with the movie per se. I have an issue with, and it's something I wanted to discuss about this movie, is the weird controversy about it. There's a controversy? <laughs> yes. There's always oh, a on. controversy. I don't, I, I'm don't. i unaware of this, Dave. Please, like, educate me. So there were, um, you know, um, how, do I, how do I say this nicely? Um, bigoted, I mean, ultra-conservative Christian groups who were trying to say ban the movie because one of the main characters is gay. Who's gay? You missed um, it. You see, yeah, that's the whole thing. Yeah. It's a, you blink and you miss it moment. It was one of the police officers was a woman and she says, yep. my girlfriend. Yep. Men yep. over my head completely. And you watched it four times. Yes. And I wouldn't call her a main character. She obviously was in two scenes and it was a, she was a very minor character. And I have an, I have an argument about that too. What species was she? How do we know that her species is nothing but female? So they have no problem with the centaur with the, with the mom who I don't know what, I don't know what a goblin troll. I don't know what they're considered really. Right. Whatever the main humanoid race is, but the lesbian character. I keep ridiculous. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it funny where they draw the line? Yes. You, hey, listen, I'm Christian, okay? You're ridiculous. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, I just, I, 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 I kept, cause I didn't, I, I only, I never read the articles about it. I just saw the headlines and, and saw them trying to make a big deal about it. And, um, I'm watching the whole movie the whole time, like trying to figure out what, what were they talking about? What are they talking about? And then when I heard her say that, I'm like, really? That's it. Like that's where, and yeah. that's where you want to draw a line. Like who cares? Like I hear that why do, all the time. Why, and, why do gay people have to be invisible too? Like why do we have to like not put them in any type of culture what? whatsoever? Like that's so, that's so disheartening. And it wasn't even in like the, it's not even in your face. It was just yep, right. this is life. Boom. Okay. Yes, exactly. No, if totally Westboro understand. Baptist Church still exists, you've got something way more serious to worry about than a character in a cartoon. I'm just Real. saying. Yeah, I mean, I think there's this this weird um, uh, belief still that, you know, Disney's still supposed to be the pure thing for children or whatever, and it's just like, no, it's a the reflection. They, I mean, yes, they still are, but they're also, you know, they, they try to reflect things that are in real life, you know? Um, yeah, I so don't know. We got this. We got this. Um, these little five minute stories. This big, like hardbound book. It's like five minute Disney stories. And I'm flipping through it today, looking for uh, one to read Andy before nap time. And he picks um, uh, Sleeping Beauty because there's a dragon. Uh-huh. And I'm like, okay, okay. So I read it to him, and he digs it. But as I'm reading it, I'm like, boy, oh boy, this is. Uh, you couldn't get away with this type of story now, where it's literally the main character has no, no. Um, <sighs> The main character just sleeps through the, the, the second third of the story, yeah. right? And you rely on you rely on just some dude to come in who has no character development of your own, by the by, and like it just it it, it comes off so dated because it is it's a product of its era. Yes, but it just made me it just made me like sit and think about how much more complex children's stories are today and better, quite frankly. Because I'll be honest with you, I read, having read Sleeping Beauty to him kind of sucks. Yeah, no, and I and I agree with that in the sense of. Like, um, and, and I've had this conversation with lots of people who are early educators and whatnot. Like, there's a, there's a tendency, there was a tendency for a long time to talk down to children. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, oh, it's a children's story, that kind of thing. And it's like, 
you don't want to do that anymore. You want to talk at their level, you know, mm-hmm. and, that, and there's, there's a huge difference in that. And that's, I think what Disney is trying to do today, you know, I mean, now look at frozen, you know, their most popular movie in a long time. And it's, it's not a damsel in distress anymore. It's a story of two sisters going on an adventure together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the prince is the bad, the, the prince charming's freaking evil. Yes. Yeah, it yeah. works. I mean, that's, it's such better storytelling. Yeah, you're seeing those older ones, Snow White, you know, Cinderella, um, with my girls, they, they don't even, you know, the, the earliest ones they like are Little Mermaid and then Beauty and the Beast. And even those are going to go by the wayside because those two stories are still like man dependent. Oh yeah. Um, but certainly they like the more, the, uh, the Moana, Frozen, you know, Rapunzel. Um, so yeah, Disney goes with the time mm-hmm. and that, that's all there is to it. I mean, let's face it. I mean, if you're Christian, well, Walt Disney was Jewish. So, uh, I, I so yeah, they're making dumb assumptions there, but they're, they're going to go with the times and they're better for it. Yeah. No, definitely. Um, I will also say, oh. uh, go ahead. Old people give great advice, but sometimes they give really stupid advice <laughs> because they don't account for this. I was told when I was young, video games aren't worth anything. You'll never be able to make money with video games. Great advice, shithead. Shit, I now I got to talk my kids out of, like, no, man, you should wrestle. And they say, well, I want to be a professional video gamer because I can make this. And I got to go, <laughs> are you really that good? I mean, like, it's... You can make a lot of money playing video games now. Yeah, like there's a there's a there's a path to life if you're really good. Like, but you have to be really no, good. Well, it's like football. Like, there's no difference between that and playing in the NFL. Like, you got to be really good at pro football, yeah. or football to get a shot in the NFL. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's it's no different, really. No, that's true. And you can, I think you can. Uh, no, that's not true either. I was gonna say you think you can develop the skills to um, play video games more than you can develop. You have to have some natural talent, I think, with sports. I, you, I think you have to have a natural talent with video games, too. Like, yeah. I can't. I suck freaking terrible. I suck at video games. You've got to have a tenacity to grind, like, to do it for, like, eight hours a day like it's an actual job. Oh, yeah. yeah. I couldn't do it. And I can't do that anymore. Now, back in the day, I could have done that. And if I would have had any clue that you could do what you could do today, oh, yeah. I would have maintained <laughs> my trajectory. Definitely. Um, but old people stirred me wrong. That's why I don't lecture my children too much about because stuff changes, guys. Yeah, the world is a the world's a constantly evolving place. The only thing that is constant is change. Um, so mm-hmm. uh, the other thing I was going to say that um, I won't say that I I, I hated it because I kind of understand why they went that way with the character. Um, but as a stepfather, I didn't like the way. <laughs> They treated the stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can see that in the movie. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, but I understand why they did the ca- because they wanted it to be about um, the boy's journey uh, to meet their biological father and, and and whatnot. So I can appreciate that. But you know, a stuff. I thought he was a use. I thought he was a useless character. I didn't even understand why he was in the movie. I so that he can. I think he's in the movie specifically so the police chasing him haven't have a vested interest. Yes. Yeah. Haven't uh, got gotcha, you. Haven't thrown him in the clink or something. Right. Uh, right. He's a he he's a plot device. He is he is a plot device through and through. Exactly. Like because without him, why do the cops chase two uh, runaway teenagers? You know, like that. They mm-hmm. don't. Um, yes. It just he, he he his presence keeps the story moving at a pace. Yes. Yeah. Um, does anyone have a favorite character in the movie? I like Tom Holland. Ian's character. His character. Ian's yeah. character. I do. I can see that. He's he's he is the one who has the hero's journey. He's mm-hmm. the one who learns the lesson. Um, he's got an everyman quality about him. Like he, he very Peter Parker ish. Yeah. Which Tom, which is totally why he gets that role is because he was Peter Parker, the best Peter Parker. I don't care what anyone else on another podcast says. <laughs> um, <laughs> like so, yeah, I, I quite enjoyed his performance. I I like that kid in whatever he's in. He's awesome. How about you, Don? You have a favorite character? I, you know, it, in the be- in the beginning, I didn't, but by the end of the movie, uh, particularly at the point at which he sacrifices his van, Barley, it did grow on me, uh, very much so, uh, and so I, I, I would say Barley, absolutely. Yeah. Um, even though I am Barley, my favorite <laughs> character is Guinevere. 
<laughs> yeah, she sacrifices bit. herself yep. so the boys can continue their journey. So, um, I mean, of course, isn't it's... it weird that unicorns are cats in this movie and dragons are dogs? Dragons are dogs. It's awesome. <laughs> it's freaking awesome. <laughs> you know the what? dirty unicorns. I didn't even like. I I realized they were they were going somewhere with the with that, but I like I just made that connection. Yes, that makes sense now. <laughs> I thought they were either cats or, or raccoons the first time. I yeah, they, raccoons, could, right? Yeah, but you no, convince me that. I, 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 no, I, I think cats works better. No, I, I agree. I agree. It's that's what I really like. And again, I don't have the firm background in D D like you guys do, but I mean, like I see the the parallels they've done to make it like our world. Like, and it's it took it's quite a bit of creativity to make those parallels. Like, I really enjoyed it. Like they used the kids menu to, as their as their map. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's so cool. Yeah. That's so cool. No, well, no. And then Barley protecting history, like at the beginning of the movie, you don't quite get it. But then by the end of the movie, you're like, well, geez, the kid was right. Like he's got this bad rap, but he's, he's correct. He's like a misunderstood wizard in a lot of ways. Yeah. Like, yeah, crazy guy. No one ever listened to him. And then he's, yeah, he's right about everything. He literally was right about everything. And again, Chris Pratt is probably the, best person to play a character like that agreed yeah. his, his overall abundance of enthusiasm is yep. perfect for a character like this oh definitely yeah it's uh it is it is very good and um i didn't realize that the mother was uh julia louise dreyfus at first i had to stop the movie because we watched it on prime when you hit pause it shows you who's in the movie in that specific scene what an awesome thing by the way oh so wow I, it's really cool. So I hit pros and like, cause I knew the voice was getting me and I couldn't spot it. And yeah, Julie Louis Dreyfus playing a mom. She's great. Yeah. I mean, I got it right away because, um, I put TBS on during the day while I'm working that background noise and Seinfeld's on in the mornings. <laughs> <laughs> so I like, I'm like, Oh my God, it's Elaine. Um, right. So yeah, it's, um, it was, yeah, it was good. Um, all right. So any anything else about the movie that uh, you think any aspects of it that we didn't cover that uh, you think made it such a good movie? I just think it's that Pixar thing, man. Yeah. Like they just they have they break down. It's funny having Disney Prime, you're able to really go back and like study Disney films, and like Pixar has far less hits than they do misses. Like they they rarely do their storytelling wrong. And, like, this is just another, like, unfortunately, because of the circumstances, I fear this movie is going to get kind of swallowed up because it's not going to have that long box office. Right, right. So I think I fear this movie kind of gets forgotten about a little bit, but it's it's really good. And I hope I hope because of uh, they put it to plus so soon that it's able to find an audience. I agree. Well, I, I know my kids enjoyed it on, and Pixar. I mean, not only do they make great stuff, but at last, I mean, my kids were born, at least my daughters were born well after Toy Story, yet it is a regular occurrence to watch all four at this point uh, on Disney Plus and uh, just quality stuff. And this is uh, another quality entry. But um, I'm with JD. It might get swallowed up a bit by everything else. Yeah. No, I mean, I think I think the movie is brilliant. I think the idea that they take um, the, the world of Dungeons and Dragons, basically, and use that as a shorthand. Um, so then you get humor like the gelatinous cube, which is, <laughs> uh, funny to anyone who's ever played Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and it's still funny even if you haven't, because apparently JD thought it was funny as well. It sounds funny. Gelatinous cube. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, like that was brilliant. And then they were able to build a story that appeals to a large audience. So, all right. Um, I know you hate doing this, JD, but let's go around real quick and, <laughs> And give a rating, one out of ten, and uh, our final thoughts on the movie. And we'll start with you, JD, since you hate doing this. <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, <laughs> no, I love, I love this movie. I would not have gone to the theater to see it. Again, my little guy's a little too young to be sitting in movie theaters still. And uh, this is something that uh, I caught mainly because of the timing. Like, I, there's a chance I would not have seen this for another four or five months, and I'm really, really glad. I did. I, I I love this movie. It's really good. I uh, highly recommend it to anybody that loves a good story. I'm going to go uh, nine wands. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Got to keep the gimmick going. Yes, you do. 
<laughs> Don? Yeah, I'm going eight out of uh, eight out of ten capes. I guess I think this is really solid. I'm not quite as in love with it as JD, but um, I did enjoy it. it has some uh, really good messages, and I absolutely love uh, the D and D reference. Particularly the so I guess the gelatinous cube is the MVP for me um, because it, it's not only an accurate D and D reference but it's a pretty obscure one so I just appreciate their attention to detail there and I, I, I like the movie it's solid eight out of ten capes cool um so as I stated in the beginning um it is definitely frozen for boys um and again if you've got kids grandkids yeah yeah definitely watch this movie with them um they lose points because of the the stepfather uh in my mind <laughs> uh again using a st- using using a stepfather as a um plot device it's just not, not cool guys we're, we're people too we have feelings uh <laughs> you must not like the sandlot and because dennis leary was put in the same role as a stepfather it was just I, doesn't he he redeems this he his character gets a big redemption though at the end like they they actually wind up with a good relationship, right? Am I thinking of the right movie? Well, they they do because yeah, and he loses his Babe Ruth ball, and not right. only gets that back, but he gets one with Babe Ruth and everybody else. So it's like it's like my son uh, loses uh, twenty dollars, but then brings me a thousand. It's like oh okay, well yeah, you did wrong, but uh, but yeah, um, then and he you know he became a a sports talk person, a, a right. analyst. So yeah, so you got. It. See, uh, we're good guys. I'm telling you. Uh, so I will give it, hmm. I'm going to go in between you guys. I'm going to give it an 8.5 Guinevere's. <laughs> uh, and highly recommend it. Again, if you've, especially if you've got kids and grandkids, um, you don't know what to do right now and you're unsure, um, how to keep them occupied. This will at least give you two hours of entertainment. Make some popcorn. They will sit through it and love it. I promise. So. Did you have a beater van back in the day? No, no, no. I never had a beater oh, van, but that's, uh, that, that's disappointing. <laughs> but if I did, it probably would have a unicorn uh, painted on the side <laughs> or a dragon, one or the other. Uh, <laughs> what a time that must have been to be alive. Where like that was a good idea. Like yeah, put a badass wizard on. No, no. I don't know if that was ever it a was, good idea. It was. It was never a good idea, but people did it. All right, all right. I think we can wrap it up this week. Um, we have we'll we'll have recommendations. Um, Don, so so go ahead and plug your your podcast and uh any recommendations you have for the listeners. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we are you know we just got done with our 11th episode of the House of D podcast. So you can find that on Podbean or the um Apple Podcast app. I actually do uh, broadcast it on Twitch live when we actually record it. No theme music or nothing, but you can check that out at uh, Twitch uh, TV slash uh, Discourse seventy two. Um, in our last episode, we had a uh, battle that will never happen. Madara Uchiha uh, versus Sephiroth guy. So uh, please, if you could go over to uh, my new uh, House of D Twitter. Not very, very many followers yet. We are a humble podcast. We are growing, but if you could go. Uh, to the House of D Pod One, so at the House of D Pod One guys, um, we have show content on there. I share news articles and and whatnot. But we have a poll, guys, that I really would like your um, you know, your participation in. Help us decide who would win, uh, Madara Uchiha or Sephiroth. We do talk about that in episode 11 of the podcast, so you can check that out as well if you want to hear a breakdown of their power sets and. Um, a lot of discussion around, you know, what they have access to and, and who we think would win. So last time I checked, it was 50 50. So, um, please guys go over there, check us out and vote in my poll. Thank you very much. Cool. JD. And, and of course, oh. superherospeak.com. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> my reviews on superherospeak.com. I got to plug for the boss here. Oh, so let's okay. plug my stuff. I got to do. <laughs> That's fine. Um, how about you, JD? Any recommendations for the listeners? Yes, as long as we're shamelessly self-promoting, I'll never miss <laughs> yes. an opportunity to do that. Uh, Books of Jericho on Amazon right now. People kind of locked, sitting out, locked down, can't do much. I got four books that you can read available on Amazon. Um, one traditional horror book, Harvest Moon. The rest of them, the Books of Jericho, a little supernatural thriller action for you. 
Just uh, if you can't find him, look up my name, JD Oliva, O L I V A, on Amazon. Hey, and I'll, hey, D Square here, you know, hey, check those books out. I love the character Jericho, and Thanks, I, man. I think you will too. So, really cool stuff. Thanks, brother. I appreciate <laughs> yeah. that. Wow. Well. Ah, it's the love fest continues. All right. Uh. <laughs> hey, hey, in this world, gotta spread it. <laughs> yeah. Well, wait, hold on. No, we don't want to spread it. Oh. Social distancing. Double entendres <laughs> get you today. That's like five. That's like five entendres right now. My brain looks like two different places. Uh, all right, I will recommend. Make sure you don't you check out superherospeak dot com uh, for the podcast every week, and of course, comic book reviews by our good friend D Square. Um, I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to get back to put news on there. Uh, uh, it's well, just been news a bad is coronavirus weeks. right now. Yeah, that, that, so. that is true. Um, also, uh, I have started watching – I've never watched the show before. I've started watching Community on Netflix. So if you've got nothing better to do, I recommend it. It's, you know, um, it's actually pretty good. I, I Joe McHale, uh, um, who else is in it? Uh, Jimmy Chase. Yeah, it's it's actually pretty funny. So um, No Tiger King? No, oh, God, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I see all the memes on 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 Facebook, and I'm like, yeah. I can't, I can't do it. I just, I can't. Yeah, same. What's down? I, I'm never gonna see. I, it. I, I, I gave it one episode. Wife loves it. I I I I have a I, I wouldn't say hatred, but uh, I a disdain for most reality television. And then when they put the worst of the worst on TV and yeah. act like it's entertainment, I'm like, no. No, it's it to me. It's that's how you feel better about yourself by watching people like that. And it's like, oh yeah, yeah. I don't need that. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna put cameras on shitty people. Watch it, will you? Yeah. Uh, uh, oh my god. Just like here comes Honey Boo Boo. So anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> on that note, boys and girls, as always, thanks for listening. And don't let your cape caught in the door. Have a good week.